After the global financial crisis in 2008-2010, the issue of how to model financial stability in rigorous economic thinking came into the forefront of economic analysis. In fact, the first problem that one was faced is, was the definition of financial stability. What do we exactly mean by financial stability? In our work, the work I have uh, done with uh, Charles Goodhart of the London School of Economics and myself, we envisage the financial stability definition as a combination of increased aggregate default and lower uh, profitability. So the combination of increased default and lower profitability is what gives, rises, uh, what gives rise to financial fragility in the macroeconomy. Therefore, if one uh, accepts this definition of financial fragility, then the next natural question is how, what are the minimal modeling characteristics that a framework that purports to analyze and dissect and more importantly assess the causes, uh, the sources, as well as the recipes for financially unstable regimes uh, require first the introduction of explicit, of an explicit monetary sector into any economic model. So liquidity and money are essential and indispensable characteristics of any attempt to model properly financial stability. Uh, combined with liquidity and uh, money is the introduction of a financial intermediation and financial intermediaries more generally. Uh, we very well know in economics that the role of banks consists of liquidity provision, risk sharing and security design plus monitoring. Therefore, the introduction of an active and comprehensive banking sector in any financial fragility model is another indispensable minimum characteristic with which one can assist uh, the analysis of financially unstable regimes. Third element of doing modeling in financial fragility is the main, is the main feature and uh, the main characteristic of any financial crisis, namely of default. The role of endogenous default is crucial and critical for any attempt to model properly financial stability into economics. Put differently, default to economics is, or to macroeconomics more uh, precisely, is what seen is to theology. is regrettable, however central and important. In fact, the role of endogenous default is the key channel and the key amplification mechanism that generates contagion and systemic risk in general. Therefore, the role of endogenous default is central and important in any attempt to model financial fragility. In other words, one should be able to incorporate both strategic default and default due to ill fortune in any economic framework that attempts to deal with financial crisis and financial stability more generally. Combined with the financial intermediaries and the role of default and liquidity, one has to understand that any economy has to be heterogeneous. Heterogeneity of actors and economic agents is always necessary if we want to be precise in our analysis and to be able to see how contagious crises are and what are the contagion channel and the systemic risk that uh, impacts upon uh, the economy. Moreover, if one introduces uh, heterogeneity in a very uh, precise and analytically tractable way, one can possibly make many arguments about welfare and prosperity of the economy and try to see which sectors of the macroeconomy are affected when an adverse financial shock hits the economy. Therefore, if one has these four elements, namely liquidity and money, default commercial banks and heterogeneity, one can properly model and can properly address the interaction of the nominal and the real sector. Because 
If we are interested in financial stability, we are interested because financial shocks are transmitted to the real economy and they have real welfare consequences to the economic agents involved. Therefore, these four elements allow us to introduce the minimal institutions that are necessary in order to address issues of financial stability, to be able to make welfare statements and try to embed into economic models the necessary financial frictions that will allow us to see contagious effects of financial crisis and systemic risk. More precisely, a necessary ingredient of a framework that purports to analyze financial stability are, is missing financial markets. So the concept that not all risks in the economy can be hedged with the existing assets and the existing uh, financial instruments is what can, is referred to economics as missing financial markets. And the importance of missing financial markets is twofold. First, it gives rise to inefficiencies, so the optimal solutions and the welfare cannot be maximized via the market system, and second, we are able to talk about endogenous default very precisely and to see how it is established in equilibrium. In other words, if markets were complete and if all the risks uh, could be hedged a priori, there would be no role of default and then the concept of endogenous default could be, if at all, only strategic. However, it is exactly, precisely the fact that there are financial frictions and missing financial markets that make default critical, important and non-neutral in the economy. And each interaction between liquidity and default becomes very central into our analysis because we may use an analogy that liquidity and default are the two sides of the same coin. And more importantly, when we have missing financial markets in such a framework with minimal institutions, is that the equilibria, or if you will, the resting points of the economy, are constrained Pareto suboptimal. In other words, the economy doesn't arrive at the first best, but in fact does not even arrive at the second best. That means that regulatory policy, monetary policy, fiscal policy, government intervention in general has real effects and may generate welfare improvements in the economy. So, missing financial markets institutions and financial frictions is basically the recipe are the characteristics that allow the assessment and uh, the analysis of government policy, monetary policy and regulatory policy and therefore its interaction in order to be able to address financial fragility and the externalities that are generated due to adverse capital finan and financial shocks into the economy. When we have such a framework, then we are in a position to systematically address the role of default and the role of regulation and its interaction in the economy. In other words, we are in a position to find, given the frictions we introduce into our way of thinking and to a market-based uh, model of regulation and financial stability, the optimal default and bankruptcy code and the optimal regulatory mix. What does this mean? That means since an economy with many externalities and many frictions produces many channels of inefficiencies, we are not able only with one single monetary policy uh, target or one single regulatory tool to be able to address all of those inefficiencies. In other words, it is neither optimal nor necessary to employ only one regulatory tool or only monetary policy to address increased default and lower bank profitability and lower welfare, adverse welfare effects in the economy. Moreover, and more importantly, the optimal bankruptcy code and the optimal regulation is neither extremely lenient nor extremely harsh. To give an example, the optimal default rule or the optimal default penalty in case that an agent abrogates its contractual obligation is not the stringest possible default penalty or the most lenient uh, penalty for the simple reason that if the default code and the bankruptcy code is very, very lenient, nobody will ever pay back and nobody will fulfill its contractual obligations and therefore the economy will come into a standstill and on the other hand, 
if the default and the bankruptcy code is very, very stringent, that will decimate and will kill the risk-taking behavior of economic agents. So the optimal default penalty should be somewhere in the, uh, in the middle of the range of possible uh, le legislatures and uh, possible bankruptcy rules. Therefore, the optimal regulatory mix and the optimal interaction between monetary policy includes multiple macroprudential tools, for example, capital requirements, liquidity requirements, net stable funding ratios, loan to value ratios, margin uh, requirements, haircuts, and so on and so forth, quantitative easing, and, uncon and other unconventional monetary policy rules. And the idea is, the whole concept is that we have multiple externalities, multiple inefficiencies, therefore we need multiple tools. And given the initial conditions of a particular economy, the policymaker should optimally combine, should optimally combine monetary and regulatory policy to, ach to achieve the best possible outcome for the economy. This way, in effect, what I have just described is a new mathematical institutional economics whereby minimal institutions will be introduced in an otherwise canonical economic model in order to be able to address the repercussions and the amplification effects of default, banks, externalities and above all missing financial markets.